everyone. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I guess uh, this is starting out for both of our streams, right? Yeah. So yeah. Would, would you like Isn't to Isn't Gray so, so professional? Like? Um, uh, yeah, sure. Um, so welcome back to the stream, everyone. Apparently, uh, I look like I work at a Blockbuster, uh, according to uh, a half now. Bane uh, and we're doing uh, those guys. Oh, uh, yeah, well, they tried to find something mean the, to say about you. The idea of cancel culture and free speech. And funny I'm sure there's more they can do. It's funny because they definitely yeah, cock uh, down agreed. Uh, to yeah. that kind and, of behavior when they hear it from other people. I just wanna, yeah. They definitely participate in that same kind of behavior. Yeah, they, they, they call it. They are watching other people. Yeah, they call it harm. Oh, oh we got Rosales. Okay, hold on. Um. Where's the volume on this bitch? Because it does say turn it up. Oh, I, I guess I could just turn up the chat volume, but the chat is pretty high anyway. Um, how do we turn up the volume here? Oh yeah, at the bottom. Talk to me. It's like regular YouTube, no? Well, yeah, talk just to me, the but uh, you know, we obviously don't see eye to eye on this. So, so yeah, we were talking it's really quickly awesome just that, before uh, we you know, you're... go back there. Um, you're so right that they, they, they talk about this, oh, we don't want to talk, cause harm and they're upset with EFAP because EFAP does, does this and they, they, they harass people and whatever. Um, but then they go and make comments like that. They should be angels. So yeah. hypocrites. It's, it's one, yeah, no, it's the progressive stack. It's, you know, punching up versus punching down. I mean, they don't actually have, um, an argument for the behavior itself. Yeah. Or, you know, in, a, in prohibition of, that is. They just complain about the, what it boils down to is the progressive stack and, you know, punching up, punching down. No, they They're think, not but no, down. isn't this punching down to gray? Yeah. They oh, I'm very down. much down. Like, oh, yeah. Or is it, no, it, it, it's lateral, so it's fine. No, it, oh, I'm definitely beneath that. Well, yes, individually, but they group, you know, you're those people, right? Mm -hmm. You're one of those people. Maybe uh, also, yeah, because of, of your endorsement from, from Sitch and Adam, you're up as well. So you're a you're fair game. So there is that, because they, they should know by now that, that Sitch and Adam have watched your videos as well. Um, and just And just all of us, I think. They know that, that there's a whole group of us now that is that is examining their in their behavior. So they've decided, they've justified for themselves why they're doing this. Also, Rosales, um, I see you, but I don't hear you. You muted yourself. Are you feeding kitty cats? <laughs> mm. It's okay. We, we we don't have to wait for him to respond. Maybe he's busy just listening to us. Gray gives off blockbuster vibes. The difference is that he really like my I really like my rental guy's opinions. <laughs> That's true. He's the manager. He's not he's not like the teenager behind the desk. There you go. There's mm. the control. I lost it for a second. Oh. <laughs> You're not as boomerish as me though, Rosales. No, no, I'm 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 older than that, so <laughs> No, I just, uh, I happen to be sitting in a car waiting to pick up my children from school, so I thought I would hop in real quick. Oh, oh right really? on. Awesome. Glad you could come come by. Um, and it's also, uh, it's more about um, media anyway, so this is a good conversation for you to jump in on, because we're looking at Gray's, um, Gray Pepe's, uh debate with, what, what's his name here? What did you got? Uh, his Up name's with culture. Yeah, yeah Ed. He's, uh, I, I've, I've, um, I've not agreed with him in many. No, and he's a, in interaction. he's a racist, so, I mean. Yeah. You guys have a history with this person or something? Uh, not, he's not a... personally for me, but like, just his, yeah, I, Andrew can explain. Yeah, he's a member of, well, at least sort of, but yeah, I know he's a member of the fandom initiative he's with. Organized chaos and actual fandom. Oh, those guys. Okay. Those yeah. guys. Gotcha. Yeah. He actually he, just clarified like yesterday that he got kicked out or uh, he chose to leave because uh, the fandom initiative wants to stay away from debates, but Ed wanted to debate, so they parted ways. 
But what? I think it has more to do with uh, Ed trying to dox rags. Wait, uh, what? He, uh, so Eduardo I totally didn't want mean to. That. He I don't... didn't want to? Yeah. That could be. Oh, he did. Interesting. That's uh, very interesting. He created a whole stream yeah. about it, but never actually did the stream. I think he got a strike yeah. or something before it actually went live. Good. Oh, that explains it. I have the uh, thumbnail for it saved. I remember that. I, like, never I actually cannot did. believe this. Wait, okay, wait. Uh, the I stream before that, that, I think like five people reported him. So. Yeah, yeah I, remember, I remember that. That was like when we just first started talking, Andrew. Um, and uh, I think also, uh, I don't know how you, you say his name. The other guy um, was something from a... Charles? Because um, it was the four of them. No, it was. The point is that there were ever there were a bunch of people that knew that this doxing stream was going to happen, and I had links to it and everything. It was literally oh, right. just. Uh -huh. uh, it was like the yeah. week that I had done the organized chaos thing and whatever, mm -hmm. and they had had the debate, so they were on everybody's lips basically. They had the debate with with Sitch and Adam, and then and they had spoken about EFAP in that debate, I think. And yeah, there was don't talk over kitty. <laughs> yes, I'm gonna turn the lights on. I've got a light for you guys. Um yeah, I think that was it. Uh, uh, so who was it? Was it Eduardo gonna do it or Yeah, it was Ed. Yeah, this guy. Okay, so I, I agree with with kicking him out then. Go then. Well done. That's very well, principled. They, I guess. I think that it's more like just more heat than they wanted. Mm. I don't think I don't. Th they show Rags's face and Mahler's face um, on a regular basis. Yeah, they. Yeah, I haven't seen more. So they. Seen Rags. So they want to dox them. I'm sure they want. But they don't want to be the one. They've they've talked about you know how how unfortunate it is that these people are able to hide. They mm. want to bring real real life. Um, accountability yes. to these guys. Yeah, so. damn, I totally missed all of this drama. Wow. Yeah, no, no it's a lot no, of they, drama. But they're, but they're just like too cowardly to have the person that actually doxes them in their circle. They want someone else to do it for them. Ah, uh, degree of deniability, yes. Yeah. Yes, so true. All right. Anyway, so let's just get, let's get into Let's get right into it. But, uh, Gray, what I've seen with you... Um, just so just from like your your debates so you try you try and start off with with good things um like you say i like this about you and whatever like you it's 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 a good way to start it's like you try and make it and not a hostile environment is that what you're trying to do yeah exactly mm -hmm. um because like how this all started with me and ed is he came to the comment section of my debate with bob and uh just he came at me pretty hard about comedy so yeah, I just told him there, like, if you want to talk about it, let's talk about it. Yeah. So I just didn't want to come off super aggressive with him. So, yeah, I definitely, uh, and I'm familiar with some of his content. So I, I did want to give him uh, praise where praise is due. Yeah. I think that's really good, you know. Mm. Uh, Especially to start off. Goodwill and charity. Mm. Yeah. And it, it exposes then later in the stream, or even how it starts out, um, how debate brain they are. Whether or not they're going to just fight you on everything. Even your compliments of them, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there was there was a, a degree of that with Bob. Uh, I I just remember him just not seeming open to it. I I, I feel like that that was there already. Like he didn't I completely agree. He didn't deny or anything. He just he was he didn't he he didn't take it for actual. Gen he immediately thought you were just being. You were you were just saying it, but like you were I, I don't I didn't think you were just talking shit and trying to be nice. You're like, no, literally you looked for something that you could say that was true and nice about him, and that's it. You weren't kicks kissing his ass. You were just saying something. I, I attempted to be genuine. Yeah. Yeah. And no, I think I, that I came across that. to anyone who wasn't against you. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, he obviously didn't feel it was that way, but what, yeah. Wait, Josh, where did you go? Did you think we wouldn't notice that you were here? You came in, you muted, so I didn't... And who else just fucked off? I'm going to call uh, it fucking off. Hydra, no. Okay, guys, let's continue. Let's play. No, he has such a nice accent. I know, it's the best. I think he can just say everything I want to say. I'll just... 
just send DMs to him and tell him just like he'll dictate me. Is that a thing? No, he'll whatever. Okay, let's continue. Just arguing against myself. Poor Rosales. He 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 figured out that I tweet to myself today. It's something I used to do a lot. Anyway, I haven't something well, it, it of attention. Hey? It got my attention, so I guess it works. <laughs> I've been doing. I, I I did it a lot previously. Uh, I guess if you're just not used to it, it's like what the frack. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. Fine. Hydro. You had to go. Uh, okay. Cool. Let's go. Sorry. I, I just needed to to make fun of Rosales because he was like, he thought that I was being insane. It's like no, that's just what I'm like. Let's go. Press play. Well, I thought you were having a conversation with somebody who uh, who had who me blocked. blocked. You. Yeah, you're like, who is this? Yeah, no, 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 it's just me, and I won't block you. <laughs> so. uh, you say that now. Yeah, let's let's get we'll get ugly. You know, talk about talk about. Uh, I was going to say Kevin Costner. Anyway, Taylor Sheridan. Yes, we'll talk about that, and then then we'll we'll have a feud about it very publicly. And then everybody here has to take sides and do reaction videos and whatever. Okay, let's go. We have an oh, hour. Awesome. <laughs> uh, Andrew, I think that's really cool. Hi, Eduardo. I think that's uh, kind of a rare thing these days. Yeah, no, I agree. Patrick. Yeah, I, I, uh, I think it's really cool. And then, um, pretty, yeah, pretty I wanted to give you a couple compliments. Um, I know you've kind of seen me in your comment section before, and then uh, I guess this started because you came to my comment section. But um, yeah, I thought those videos that you did on the Southland Tales was just awesome. They were okay, like, one more thing, Gray, your voice alley, is amazing. And it really kind of got my interest back into that. It is. It's a weird thing. Thank you. That, like, I don't know, who starts a movie on part four? It really weirds me out, though, that it's only coming through one year. Because oh, I'm, like, yeah. I'm not used to that. Yeah, oh, yeah sorry about that. I screwed though. that up. Oh, I thought it was intentional. No, uh, me and Ed tried to set it up ahead of time, and yeah, he told me he could hear it through both, and yeah, my bad. I believe oh, no, it's, it's fine. Yeah, no, it's a uh, you've got it. The re what's happening is is you've got it uh, through a stereo setting, so you're plugged into um, your device is set up so that it's trying you parts what? and comic books to actually like. Kind of understand what's going on. Yeah, you're totally right. right. I had it set on a so, stereo. Uh, oh, yeah. Mono. It, my bad. I happened to cover that no, in a, a bunch of videos. It's that fine. was really cool. Yeah, no, it was it was um it was a lot of fun, man. You know, it was, uh it's it's been a while since I've like just gave myself over to something like that and it was it was a blast, you know. I'm looking forward to doing it again on the next one. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then uh I thought that new series that you just did um Respect the craft, I think is what you're calling it. Yeah. I think that's really cool. Uh, that's a really cool idea, taking a look at songs that aren't well-respected and kind of dissecting them. That's uh, really awesome, man. Uh, I think that's yeah, a really thanks. cool concept. I'm looking forward to your next one. Ooh, desk grips. Be ready for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome, actually. Hell yeah. Cool, man. Uh, cool. Uh, so, yeah, I guess we're kind of talking today because mm -hmm. uh, you uh, had commented on my talk with Bob. Right. It was kind of... Um, I don't know. You had a few comments in there. I think we kind of went back. And yeah, forth yeah. No, he, you know, for me, like uh, this is uh, it's 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 a slightly frustrating conversation, in my opinion, uh, for for it to even be had, right? Because one second, I just wanted to pause right there and say, pause whenever you why want. Does guys. it need? Why is it? Yeah. Why is it? Why is it so bad that this conversation needs to be had? I mean, if there's confusion, it's... if there's you know, if there's problems that arise um, between people or whether that's groups, um, you know, communities or whether that's individuals, why is it a problem that conversations um, need to be had? I mean, we're not talking about something that's exceptionally taboo. This is something that is. Uh, it's you know, harmful, I would say. No, he thinks it's harmful. What it is, is it, it's, it's a degrading way of saying something is what that is. Mm -hmm. When somebody says, uh, you know what, why do we even have to talk about this? I, I can't believe we're having to talk about this. What they're saying is that you don't realize how wrong you are. And it's socially awkward how wrong you are. And I have to bring it to your attention. So he, he's mm -hmm. starting off by demeaning you in the first place and trying to to put you on a footing uh, to, to put you on the defensive to, uh, and to let everybody else who's listening know that he's right. You need to be corrected. Yeah. yeah. 
it, it needs to be said, you know, like you, you need to be put in your place. Um, yes. and like, yeah, it needs to be publicly done as well. Like I, I need to, first of all, okay, cool. You're wrong, Gray, number one, and I need to correct you, but also everybody needs to see me correct you, which I think we discussed, uh, Sitchin Adam did also talk about this court sort of thing in terms of platforming people, um, of like, you, you need to show it. I guess it, it works from this point as well. When you are speaking against someone, uh, who you disagree with, you need to show that so that the, you know, that poor audience that, that doesn't know any better needs to be educated through Gray's uh, public, you know. Yeah. 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 Um, and right off the bat, he, he puts it in such a way that uh, not only are there just, it's not just two opposing opinions. You see, mm -hmm. one of them is already uh, in the wrong. OK, yeah. so I'm coming at it at, from a point of view that uh, that I'm going to be correcting somebody correcting, who is blatantly yeah. wrong and everybody else should be should know that he is wrong. And if you don't know that, uh, well, then I'm sorry that we have to talk about this. We'll let you know that he is wrong before anything is ever said. So true. Right. Yeah, it's not an yeah. it's immediately framed as not a difference <laughs> in opinions. It's a, it's actually I need I, I'll just need to stop you there. I just need to stop you right there. And could, could, you know, correct you. That's so true. Yeah, and a little bit of a uh, spoiler is that this behavior is maintained throughout the entire debate. Uh, it only amps up. Can, we could, it, yeah. it gets really bad. We should see if I can map while we do these things. I don't know if my computer will <laughs> handle it right now, but I want to do that. I want to. That's that was my other thing. That's why when I first set up the debate diagram stream, I had a scene already with guests. Um, not like obviously like this, but in terms of having guest audio, um, because I wanted to be able to try and do the mapping while we talk. So let's, let's do that sometime guys, but let's, let's do, let's continue this way. I like, I like this discussion as well. Let's go. Let's do it. Press play. Fundamentally, nobody can take your free speech away except the government period. Yeah. Nobody no, else. Right. So therefore, cancel culture to me is just like made up intellectualized. Uh, and just right. Sorry. Just no, but it. um, it's so um, foundational, you know, is that that is such a disingenuous thing. Um, I mean, it's a blind spot, I guess, is, uh, for him. But just I mean, that's one of the things that they complained about with the uh, the government. But. Um, well, okay, so like chilling effects, you know, having, um, having pressure, I mean, with, uh, like the don't say gay bill, even if it's not in the law, you know, just the fact that you might, fearing that you might run afoul of a rule, um, can be an infringement on your free speech. I mean, that's that's their, the, one of their arguments. Um, but uh, and like also surrounding trans issues with conserving, um, considering. Republicans in general, not the Republican Party, not the government, but just uh, conservatives and Republicans, they argue that they are infringing on um, trans rights. And so just like socially. Right. So. I don't buy this nobody can take away your free speech argument. It's just something that is very convenient for him um, mm -hmm. in this argument in relation to comedy. But it's not something that is um, – it's not a position that he holds in all areas. That's what I was like going to say. How is this – How is because, like, look, I haven't watched this. I'm like, how is – how if if the government's the only thing that can take away your speech? Okay, first of all, the government shouldn't be able to. Cool, but if they say, if say the government's the only thing that's able to take it away, um, does that mean that doesn't that mean that he should shut up? Um, because I mean, shouldn't be free in many yes. respects. Yeah, but in he doesn't believe in cancel culture either. So it's only the government does. that could cancel you. <laughs> But he okay. does, you know, later on, you do a very good job of showing how, you know, that he does believe in it. 
It's but what just does that he, he mean? Doesn't, he just doesn't think that it's like all that bad. He, it's like, oh man, that's uncool. But I mean, whatever. When he said it, nobody can take away your free speech except the government, does he mean that it's immoral for anything but a government body to take away your free speech, or does he mean like he thinks no, it just by doesn't count if it's not the government doing it. Yeah, yeah, like by definition, that's free just the consequences is... of your actions. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's stupid. It is stupid. That's it like is. saying if someone kills you, they're not infringing upon your right to life because it wasn't the government doing it. Hi, yeah, Charlie. I mean the government didn't kill you. Yeah. Well, hello. Uh, I just wanted to pop in. I think it's the other way around, kind of. It's not that, like, only the government can infringe on, like, your free speech. Right? Because ultimately, it's it comes like The comes Bill of from... Rights only applies to the government, right? Like, you don't have an inherent... Uh... So that the only people that are restricted from infringing on that right... And then they play into the, like, oh, well, a business can take away your right to be at the business, or a business yeah. can, like, or a person yeah. can tell you to shut up. Is that infringing on your right to free speech? And it's like, no, no, no. The right to free speech is inherent, not something that we just tell the government not to do. Michael says yeah. each No, it's nitpicky. I don't know if he thinks it's inherent. I think he thinks the government grants you that right. But, yes, uh, everything that you said, yes. That, 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 is, well, that, well, that is a viable pos position, I suppose, yeah. Well, yeah, but if that was his position, then it would be like a mission. Well, it's not a viable position. It's insane. No, <laughs> yeah, I'm well, saying like, it, it makes sense for, doesn't it make sense with what he's trying to argue here? Right. Uh, uh, okay. But well, it's not something he holds. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. That's what it's I'm, so something. then, then yeah. the, the main point of it's not something he holds in any case. He brought this thing to light here about the government, right? And for me, I was like, doesn't that mean that we are allowed to have have comedy and have it be free. Isn't he supporting what we're talking about? Blaine, come back here. <laughs> well, it, it it would also be him conflating like the Bill of Rights with actual natural rights that you're born with. Yeah. Like the First Amendment is just saying that, uh, you know, the Constitution is restricting the government from infringing yeah. upon your right. That doesn't. That means that like by definition that means you must have had the right to free speech beforehand mm -hmm. and now we're saying the government can't infringe upon that yeah yes. well we have this concept of um the public square right and that's kind of what was being um argued in favor of during the civil rights is that you can't control who has access to the public square everyone needs to be allowed we can't you can't segregate that you know um all citizens need access to it that that um was a main thrust in uh the civil rights of the 60s and or you know yeah and so we really haven't codified that all of that into law ex expressly you know we had the issue with um you know the gay wedding cake Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that's a, that's a, that's a good standard, you know, it's like, if something is publicly available, then yeah. sure you can, that you can buy it. Anybody should be, anyone should be able to buy it, but you can't force somebody, can't force to somebody to make it. something for you that is against your values or that you can't just, you can't just can't force somebody, um, to, to make something specific. Mm -hmm. They can they can deny you service um, at that point because I I I wouldn't want um, some you know neo Nazi forcing a, a Jewish baker to make some kind of Nazi cake yeah I wouldn't and and anything along those kinds of well, lines right, like rights of admission it's happening. basically that idea of like rights of admission as well but like, okay so what is the uh, Michael as well is like okay what is the argument okay I guess we need him to get there but the point is. He's the whole point that he wanted to have this argument with you, Gray, is he's like, no, comedy isn't free speech. You would expect because I mean, the name of your stream is comedy is free, uh, is is free speech. So he obviously doesn't think that. That's yeah. That was the first comment that he left on my uh, video. Okay. So yeah, and that was kind of what I asked him to. Hey, if you want to talk about this, let's come on stream. Okay, and when we hear I this, mean, we think his angle is. What the government can't take it from you. The only the only restriction should be the government. Okay, so Blaine Blaine made 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 that his made the that that it's that's the the position he's taking of that 
it, it, that only applies to the government, whereas it looks like it. Wait, 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 hang on. I'll, I'll... I'm I'm missing something here. Is he saying that a joke is the only thing the government can't take? No, that would make sense. Uh, <laughs> no, he's trying to say that uh, your actions should have consequences, and any of those consequences are not an issue of free speech since the government isn't doing it. Okay. Well, if he says comedy isn't free speech, is he like necessarily implying that you're using some sort of like force on somebody by making jokes that no. offend people uh, or something? No, it's it's almost the reverse, where he's like, um, the crowd, um, as long as they're not heckling in the club, the crowd can do almost anything outside of the, the club, as long as they're not breaking the law. And sure, some of that action, some of those actions can be pretty shitty, but they are not illegal. And as long as they're not breaking the law, then it's fine. Like protesting comedy, like, like not not just protesting, but they can be, like I mean, they can. Gosh, and it never quite you you jump um, skirted around it a lot, um, but you never quite got to the point of talking about tortious interference, which I think is the core argument against cancel culture, is that it's illegal to insert yourself into the business dealings of somebody else. That there's a, a civil case you can bring against someone um, about that kind of tortious, like I said, tortious interference. Um, Has that ever happened to a heckler? Well, no, no. But heckling, heckling is um, bad form. But we're talking about people organizing um, either formally or informally outside of, like, before an event happens and getting the venue to stop their um their business dealings with a comedian hmm. so like, that the, that's the, kind of a an interesting law though like would that apply to like if an oil company wanted to make a deal with like saudi arabia and protesters stop them from doing that could they be could the protesters be sued um see tortious interference is um one specific party um inserting itself um with um Two others. Uh, so there, I can't remember, but there was um, there's this comics gate um, case that's like this, where one comic um, comic guy found out that a com um, that somebody was being partnered up with a comics gate guy, and so then the comic guy got the producer, the publisher, whatever, to cancel their agreement with the uh, the comics gate guy. And so then the comics gay guy is taking the other guy to court because for tortious interference because he got in the way of that of their business dealing. And so that um, is much more clear cut. You would have to, um, and the reason why these cancel culture isn't as um, actionable is because it's so diffused among so many different people and exactly how much mm -hmm. of this is just listening to your customer and how much of this is tortious interference is it's very gray yeah, when is area. it when is it just like social like like discretion versus actual infringement on somebody's uh yeah. ability to make a living i mean look look i guess we can as we we press play we can figure out more about where yeah. we're breaking down from his first few sentences because we look he he should. We we were expecting him to know what he's trying to say immediately, um, but let's watch as he, as uh, yeah as he continues. Sorry. But like no you no, wanna... you know what I love is that look, guys. Do you see how we can take forever? <laughs> Where we spoke like he's spoken like maybe ten seconds, and we're like having a huge ass conversation. I love it. I love it. Do you want to turn up the playback speed so we can get through more of it? Um, if we are okay, we can do that. Um, like maybe go one point two five, one point five. Yeah, so I was thinking. Yeah, one point two five. All right. Let's go. All right. Um, media figures. It comes from comedians, right? It comes from artists who essentially make it their job to be public figures, right? They they are uh they are choosing to make their private lives part of their pri part of their professional lives, because a lot of it, whether you like you know whether anybody wants to agree with it or not. We do judge our artists on on their actions and stuff like that, and, and I mean it goes both ways, right? A lot of your favorite bands, I bet you know a lot about their personal lives. I bet you know a lot about like how that informed the songs and things, right? 
Yeah, for sure. Right. That's because inherently we do attach our personal feelings a lot to the artists that we respect. So when an artist uh, chooses to speak totally out of pocket, they are risking losing the audience. They are choosing to do that. And if the Excuse audience me. chooses to not follow them, I don't understand how that is in any way cancel culture. It seems like a transaction to me. I am no longer going to be the kind of person you're going to like. Hey, what's up? What's up, WG? And I don't think there's anything wrong with the audience turning around and saying, okay, you can be that. Are you, nobody, I cannot take your free speech away, so you can go do that wherever you want. I'm just not going to support you. And I think you definitely can do that. I think anyone you know has the right to vote with their dollars for sure. And I think mm -hmm. um, you know comedy is kind of a, I guess it's kind of like a tightrope act. Um, you are walking that line of what is acceptable and what isn't acceptable. Um, it's uh, you know it's kind of a hard thing to uh, say like what exactly is acceptable and what isn't. The line does seem to be moving. Uh, it seems to be moving all the time, right. and the audience seems to be the judge of it. And that's why I think comedy is a slightly different art. I understand what you're saying that like you know it's not the government coming in and. Uh, you know, trying to censor these people, which is awesome. I mean, I, I think we're all for that, you know, like that would be very totalitarian. That would be, you know, getting into like exactly. Germany, like World War II. Mm -hmm. that, that wouldn't be a good thing. Uh, we definitely don't want that. Um, but comedy seems a little bit different. You have that barometer and it is supposed to be that room. Uh, it is what the audience is going to say. And if they laugh at that joke, it was successful. And if they don't, you know, it wasn't successful. But that doesn't mean that you have the right to then try and make sure that they can never perform again or... But what does know. that mean to you, though? What does it mean? Because I... I mean, yes, there's been social media campaigns and all that. And I'm not going to deny that. But more often than not, it just seems like they just piss off too many people to continue being as successful as they used to be. And that just seems organic to me. It just seems like these... Oh, I think he's being disingenuous, yeah. Uh, I just uh, from the person who... I haven't seen this go through... I haven't seen where this was lands up. I can see where it's going. And I can, he, he's trying, is, is this, to me, I think this is just going to be, it's not happening, but if it is, then blah, blah, blah. Because that that's that's kind of what happens with all the co cancel culture discussions of, okay. Um, he's going to move the goalpost. Yeah, he's going to move it. He's going to be like, okay. Uh, you No, no, no. It's just, it, I'm very happy with people voting with their dollars, like Gray said. Sure, that's my position. He seems to agree. And then it's just, then when we come into different kinds of examples, then it's actually going to be like, it's going to get more um, murky and more disagreeable. In my oh, guys, there. sorry, just stream people. Uh, can you hear everything nicely? We're having a great time, but if you can't hear, please let me know. Oh, I can't hear very well. Uh, through Discord, you're not he hearing well? Eek. Yeah, I'm not hearing very well through Discord, but mm -hmm. I do know that uh, he was very disingenuous when he says you, when you make uh, when you become famous or you try to become famous that your uh, your private life becomes fair game. That's not true at all. You mm -hmm. don't expose your private life to everybody else. Um, there was a comedian who uh, talked about things that he knew about and and uh, uh, talked about things in his life. That were true and people called him a racist not knowing that he had a black wife and mm. uh, and black children and and yeah. that's because he kept his private life private yeah. and but that was also the, the the point of his conversations about his family when he was telling jokes was that you know he's, he's talking from a certain experience however that doesn't necessarily mean that the jokes are 100 percent accurate to what's going on it doesn't mean it doesn't invite people to to come into his life and and talk to his wife and stop around the street and say, "Hey, did uh, this this X Y Z thing happen in the joke? Is that for real? Do you guys really keep that next to your bed? You know, yeah. it, it doesn't invite anybody. There, there's a certain amount of privacy that is expected. That doesn't make of it, people yeah. because it doesn't make it decent that, for you to do that, right? That, yeah. But I also think that Ed's point is a little bit different than that. His point is that with twitter people are putting uh, and social media in general pretty mm -hmm. bands are putting out their public lives on well, they're... on display anyway i think i think that's his point yeah but fair and, game. Well, it, it's hard to tell because but, he throws stuff out there and then doesn't follow up on it and moves yeah, on yeah, to something yeah. different he like around, he, yeah. he, he's, he's trying to confuse things he's mm -hmm. trying to confuse the issue well, that, that appears no, to be his I, tactic throughout this whole conversation no, I think that what it is is that he's he has a small insular friend group, and they mm. all know what they mean when they talk to each other. So he doesn't and have so, to be clear. What yeah. like half or a, or at least a quarter of this whole conversation is happening inside his head. Yeah. He doesn't understand that you can't read the subtext of what he's saying. That yeah. he doesn't realize that there's all a a bunch of when you say thing. 
You know, I don't know what you mean when you say thing. I, I actually had the same sort of feeling the other day, well, uh, with Lance even. he It's the same sort of thing. Like, can you tell us what's going on in your head? Like, you know, like, uh, you actually don't want to be reading the person's mind. That isn't great to... A lot of the time with these kinds of people, you can read their minds because they're not very complex. But um, we need to all be aware of that. Like, that, okay... Yes, when we're talking to each other, we all kind of seem to know what we mean because we've had these conversations so many times. But you're right. Like when you say thing, uh, what is thing to you? But I think I think when it comes to fair game, saying the words fair game, like, oh, oh you brought that up, it's fine. That doesn't take away the morality of like, just because like you guys know my husband's name's Gordon. Does that mean now that you are, that I've invited you to harass him? That doesn't mean that. Yeah. You know, no. yes, I've taken the risk by mentioning his name and, you know, having him walk around in the background and things like that. I've taken the risk. We've both taken the risk. But that doesn't make it decent or um, OK for anyone to now go and decide to harass him. You'll fuck your shit up, by the way. <laughs> so don't do that. <laughs> but yeah. Sorry, let's go. They're not very complex. Yeah, Kel. <laughs> Okay, play. Gray, I demand to see your puppy. You understand too, man. Like the audience is changing, right? For we, sure. you and I, we grew up in the nineties. I the 90s, just put him in the being, channel. Like kind of coming yeah. at comedy from this Random. like you know edgy sort of perspective and stuff like that. Like that had a place. I love that shit. I'm not gonna sit here and say that I still don't enjoy that because I do, right? But at the same time, I I understand why that's not like cool. And I. And I Sure, like I can have my, I can enjoy it and I can have my complicated feelings about it. I wouldn't want them to continue doing this content. And frankly, like a lot of these comedians feel the same way. I mean, if you look at just South Park, right? Like, yeah, they're still edgy, they're still offensive, they still well, do I, a lot, but they're just I not really happy. like their philosophy on it, though. Um, hmm. they've made a couple different episodes on it, but either everything's okay or nothing's okay. Sure, it's and the question becomes, I mean, my question for mm -hmm. you is, like, what does the comedian, what is what are they owed? What are they owed for putting themselves out there and, and, and trying um, these offensive jokes, these controversial jokes and stuff like that? Because uh, I think they are definitely owed the opportunity to try that humor out. And they are definitely owed um, the respect to, to uh, you know, see how that might fit in an artistic context. But I think that's where it ends. If if, if 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 someone comes to the conclusion that like, OK, I've given you the respect to do that. I still think you're not funny and I still think you're just offensive for the sake of being offensive. I don't want to do anything. I don't want to support you. I don't see how that's inorganic. No, I, I'm not arguing that anyone couldn't do that. Like, mm -hmm. that's your free speech. The comedian has the free speech as well. They right. have the right to say that. Mm -hmm. But that contract that you have by going into that club is, you know, I'm going to give you the opportunity to try to make me laugh. And part of that is you might fail. Yes. So I don't believe that, uh, you know, you would then have the right to, you know, do a heckler's veto or, you know, start sure. shouting down the comedian. Mm -hmm. That seems completely out of place. I mean, yeah, I agree. There, there are some clubs that do allow heckling, but for the most part, you know, you do it at your own risk and you're probably going to get kicked out because it's just not what's expected at that show. Right. And then some of the cancellations that have happened, somebody has either recorded a piece of a set from, a show or they've reported it back like there was no actual like um recording of like the tracy morgan thing mm -hmm. just some uh, journalist said this is exactly what he said it's a little tough um yeah. you know are they really like a stenographer or you know could they have possibly misinterpreted it does it have the same delivery it's just not the same thing to then take it outside of that club and try and get them canceled or prevented from being able to go back to the club i don't yeah. think you have the right to say like my sensibility is the only thing that matters here right i something that you said that doesn't get brought up until much later I think this is really good that you bring up right there at the beginning is that the cancellation is about coming back um is being prevented from coming back mm -hmm. um it takes him a while to understand this but um he goes Ow. on about like the audience choosing to walk away but that's not what's being discussed here um and you know you've got um, oh, like I was saying it. before, yeah. you know, um, a form of tortious <laughs> interference um, is being perpetrated, you know, that you have a small, a vocal minority of people tr uh, trying to prevent um, right. a business right. dealing going right. on between different groups, right. rather than the audience just evaporating. Yeah, and like then the... the the yeah. free market taking its, you know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's a difference. It is restriction versus just the natural progression. How, right. But how do we how do we differentiate between these yeah. two things? Yeah. Where's the line? Yeah. Exactly, exactly. I mean, the the Bud Light situation with um, Dylan 
I can't remember his Mulvaney. name. Mulvaney. Uh, uh, her name. Yeah. Vaney. Vaney. name. Yeah. But that situation is a, like, where the, where is the line on that exactly? When, when is it, you know, just upset at your brand that you care about, um, you mm. think is being, a, um, insulting to you or you've, you've di been disrespected somehow and you're letting the company know that versus an actual cancellation. When is that? Well, I think, I think. I think that's Sorry. different because I, I can't help but feel like nobody was buying Bud Light anyway. And then conservatives <laughs> just like took credit for that because everyone realized it was piss water at the same time. But no, I, I think that <laughs> sales have dropped significantly since that. I think that it, it was even I mean, if it was low before, it's lower now. Right. Yeah. 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 But, you know, but the, the, you know, the line between that would be if you were buying Bud Light before you just stop or all Anheuser Bush products. Right. And then no, like. I, I, protesting walmart for still carrying bud light like that's different because right you know, just because yeah. you're involved in a boycott doesn't mean that everyone else that might want to buy bud light should be involved now i th i think that's very insightful yeah mm -hmm. you telling everyone you know hey let's not buy this versus going to a store and saying hey you can't carry this yeah i think that's a good uh line to del uh to delineate yeah it, restriction versus just not taking action yourself a boycott is yeah. not taking action. It's not, uh, it's not exercising your choice to. It's not. Right. Yeah, it's not consuming. Even if you're, yeah, even well, if you're organizing. Control is is that uh, a, a lot of Republicans uh, don't have those community organizer skills? You know, mm -hmm. I think uh, it was more of a grassroots kind of a thing than it was uh, somebody sending out uh, massive emails and organizing. Mm -hmm petitions right. and 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 getting people together to stand outside of some place you know and and a lot of uh, a lot of conservatives don't don't really like that sort of thing no. so uh you know, it's 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 hard to get them to do anything like that which is why they continue to lose in different uh different arenas politically when it comes to voting on things because they they just don't That's, they don't yeah and especially if you go to comedy that's so funny. Ted Kaczynski has a chapter on that in his manifesto where he just says conservatives hate all the new technology and yet buy it all when it comes out. <laughs> and it's, I it's was so funny to say scared, that. They, was they scared by that because he was saying so many things that uh, that started to ring true. And I wondered if it was just him or me or if he was on 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 point or the, the, the Unabomber. Yeah, yeah. As soon as they published his manifesto, everyone was like, "Okay, well, we don't like the bombings, but he's he's right about everything in the book." Yeah, that doesn't. Yeah, just speak now. Well, you, okay, let's talk about that. Um, about somebody having a manifesto or whatever and doing something for that, just because their ideas seem look okay, the ideas do lead to actions, and that's very scary. But when when some just because there's something you agree with from somebody who's done something crazy if that idea itself is not crazy it is okay <laughs> you know it makes sense i think it's a terrible marketing strategy to yeah. sell a book <laughs> yeah well uh, hold on it was a great marketing strategy because he wrote so many books and and that's the only one that got published is the Hi. one he wrote when he was bombing other people yeah. or that's the only one that everyone read Wait, he was a you, you he don't was get a, profits Matt, was... right if, if that's <laughs> when you're a criminal right but I think story. that I don't think he cared though. I yeah. mean, he lived in a shack. He didn't. Wait, want when you're crazy, yeah. when you're that crazy, yeah, you just want your story, yeah. your your message out, and oh, yeah. He's one of the most well, quoted mathematical professors like in the history of the U.S. And people only cared about him when he started blowing shit up. Hmm. Yeah. No. Well, I think yeah. that I don't. I don't disavow. recommend that as a marketing ploy. Yeah, yeah I, I wouldn't no. say so, guys. But, uh, mm. Well, one of the things that I think is important is that ideas don't necessarily lead to actions. Yeah. Um, I think that but it's that's when what scares people. you get pushed into a corner, when mm -hmm. you feel like you don't have any way out, when you lose hope. Oh, um, you know what? And also when you when you feel like that's like taking actions that are not necessarily in line with uh, your ideas. Uh, you were talking about, you know, sorry. 
like when you when you feel like taking actions not that aren't necessarily about your ideas, you feel like you're justified in doing certain mm. things. Uh, the the means justify the ends. Yeah. The ends justifies the means. Sorry, that way, like that that is when when bad idea a uh, good ideas get a bad rap because people do bad things in the name of good ideas. It's uh, it, that yeah. Um, they, they don't apply their own ideology. They're just like, okay, cool. Well, what, once we kill everybody, then we'll be able to have our, our communist utopia. Um, so it'll be fine. It's all good. It's worth it. Well, well, Adam, Adam in, I don't know which stream it was, but he said something along the lines of authoritarianism isn't an ideology. Exactly, it's like a, a yes. means of achieving an ideology. Yeah, I love that. I love that. That's and exactly it. And the Unabomber just happened to be an authoritarian anarchist. Mm -hmm. It's just, yeah, let's let's do it this way. Um, and then there was the, the interesting conversation that we should have one day um, is uh, whether whether you could have um, what 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 they they came up. They were like, no, can you enforce libertarianism with libertarianism? by any means necessary? Yeah, but it, it was very strange. Uh, it was they got into it a little bit, but. Um, yeah, we, they they had to go off it. I would say that it would um it would necessitate becoming something different. Same thing like um can you enforce Yes, that was the um, question. Yes, can you multi yeah. 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 Like with liberalism, can you enforce everyone to be, be accepting or yeah. or you know, create a framework it was for, the dip. Can you enforce a framework dip. of of accepting multiple ideas yeah it's like you well can't, but you can't but i um, i would say that that's that can... oh, i'm sorry oh yeah. no sorry go ahead i i would say that that's just like a sort of a like a modern liberal way of looking at new ideas like how could this possibly be enforced like you need to force something upon people mm -hmm. right like well, if, if you're like well how did like tribal communities work 10,000 years ago if there was no federal government. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's just like a very, this is the only way things work because it's how they work now mm -hmm. sort of mentality. Right. Well, what I mean though is like, you can force, you can inf enforce non-interference, but you can't force everyone to accept the ideas is what I mean. Yeah. Isn't the, isn't enforcing non-interference interfering? Yeah. <laughs> That, that, well, that's what well, the question, is. how the question became, like, how do you, how do, can, will it have necessarily, necessarily does it have that effect because you're enforcing non-interference? Well, like, you would necessarily have to be intolerant of intolerancy in yeah. order to enforce tolerance. And yeah. So uh, the, the whole I idea is it. flawed. It's, well, yeah, I, no. With that, no, I think that, that that actually, you know, brings it right back around to this, this concept is that you can um we can allow boycotts without allowing people to mm. um small minorities of companies to um or small minority of people to force companies into uh behaving the way they want yeah so there has to be authority like yeah. the bakery in uh, like the bakery in colorado the bakery in colorado right. Right. oh the, was uh, the gay cake shut down simply because they kept the being cake. sued even though yeah. the Supreme Court said that they should not be uh, penalized exactly. using the, uh, mm -hmm. the, the no that that uh, the legal system, and they they, yeah. they they were until the point where where they could not operate anymore. So right. I mean, you are enforcing something, and and yeah. the whole yeah. point of that was not to have a cake made at all. They they were never interested in a cake. They were interested in shutting down a bakery that had an ideal that was not. With, that was not theirs. Yes. So they were yeah. basically intolerant mm -hmm. of the yeah. intolerant people and and used the legal system to shut them down. So right. they, well, they were intolerant. Right. Well, yeah, the um, the legal system definitely is not perfected. You know, I, I completely agree that that you can abuse like was a, a wealthy company can tie up um people with legal fees yeah um and in the process of they can force people to engage in the legal system that can't afford it and then make the ruin them i mean definitely the legal system has flaws 
Um, but the, I believe that the Supreme Court was correct in that decision. It's just a shame that they weren't protected from uh, from those lawsuits. Um, I think that they should have been forced to. Well, I mean, I guess theoretically, if they'd sure. been smart enough to counter sue. Yeah, that, how won, do you get that the, there should and, be limits there? Um, geez, yeah. oh, it's so exciting. I, want, I love this. Um, sorry, I just want to see uh, triple. I've always called him triple three, but it's it's six threes. I don't know how you would mm. like me to refer to you, my three friend. What if I write a manifesto about discovering faster than light travel, but then I finish it by explaining how I'm a red pill fanatic, and that is why, uh, and that is why I like science, and then go up blow, and and blow up a girl's school. I have you been watching? Uh, what I was gonna Rolo is that his name? Hey? Is that yeah. is that? Did he tweet? <laughs> Rolo is not um, MGTOW. He's but not mixed. Okay. I wouldn't be surprised if he's married. He gave that. Yeah. He's married somehow. Jesus. Anyway, I'll, I think the idea was to make an example of the bakery. Don't disagree with us or else. Yeah. You see, if there were other people that agree with them and then support them in that way, um, was that limited? Did, did were they? Gosh, there, there's a there is a. So you have the space of legislation and you know, the, the legal system, but then society also needs to take its toll upon bad behavior, which, which has happened before. I understand that, but you also, so that's what I'm saying about the limit, the limiting factor of the court. So like saying, okay, well, no, you can, you need to stop being, uh, you need to stop a frivolous lawsuits and things like that. That's the the place that the the government would take in that situation. Um, but well, well, the thing yeah. about that is that uh, they, there are laws in place uh, against limited lawsuits. Yeah, about, uh, yeah. But just like uh, lots of laws in the United States, uh, certain DAs mm -hmm. and uh, certain officials will refuse to enforce uh, said laws. Um, we had a uh, we had a law uh, a DA in Dallas that said any crime over nine hundred dollars. Uh, in damages uh, will not be pursued. So they basically green lit petty crime. Um, there are laws against petty crime uh, and there are, uh, you know, consequences to it. And just like there were supposed to be consequences to bringing another frivolous lawsuit yeah. against somebody who won in the yeah. Supreme Court, there were some people in the higher places who uh, disagreed with the Supreme Court and chose not to follow the ruling and let things go on. So it, it just it's it's a matter of of who's in place and what they're willing to do. I, I go so far as to say that o Obama at mm -hmm. some point in his in his career had just said, well, we're not going to follow these immigration laws specifically. And we're going to create this uh, group of dreamers because they have dreams of high hopes of creating life and and living freely in the United States, and we're just going to allow them to come in, and we are not going to enforce certain laws. And he instructed uh, several parts of the government not to do that, and they didn't. And and that was okay. Everybody was okay with it uh, because philosophically, everybody Sounds agreed. Good. Yeah. Unlike except for the Republicans, uh, mm -hmm. but nobody was listening to them at that point. Well, it's obviously like there are some laws that you just kind of that might never get over peeled, but you don't want enforced. Right. Like in Florida, it's illegal to handle. I don't know what kind of fish, salmon or trout or something in a suspicious manner. Suspicious. Hey, now. <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, it's at, at some point you're like, OK, this America, is a silly law. Can I have the green card? Oh, that's so bad. No, right. there, was, there was there was a guy at some point who did something he shouldn't have. And they said, shouldn't that be illegal? No, my God! Oh no, is that what it is? Oh God! Uh -uh. It's it's a, I mean, and there's other states like in some states it's it's illegal to make offensive gestures at horses. Like there's all sorts of weird stuff. Oh, but, I like yeah, that. It, 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 I like it, the start my with Obama. Like there were so. there were lots of sodomy laws that uh, until they were repealed were just not enforced for the longest time unless you went into the wrong county. In, in in a backwater state. So I mean, yeah, well, you know, not enforcing laws is something that's that's been used time and time again. 
and and usually like those laws are only like tacked on to if you can't get someone you want to get on something else you like well you you sodomized and then we yeah. get them on that like how they got Al Capone on like yeah yeah that's tack yeah. Thing. Look, that, this is a broader legal discussion for, oddly enough philosophy. the same thing happened to him in prison but um bum there, there are on Disco. Uh, there is a soundboard. I need to set that up as well. Um, yeah, that definitely needed it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> guys, look, I, I'm. We're gonna carry on here. I know that it's only 15 minutes le- like left, but we're gonna go on. I, I, I really am enjoying this, uh, and I want to get more into the debate. Um, let Let's have a goal of at least 20 minutes into Gray's debate, and then I'll end stream. But um, well, Matt, yeah. I, I just <laughs> wanted to say I, I, I wasn't able to get in the word earlier but when we were talking about enforcing things mm. and like tolerating tolerance mm. i just wanted to say that like when you're talking about force which is enforcement mm-hmm. people all like think of force but obviously there's like defensive uses of force Limits. and like aggressive yeah. uses of force mm. and retaliatory uses of force yeah so if, you, if you're what were we, what was it what exactly force, like yeah. uh uh tolerating like uh tolerance or something like that well if you're gonna intolerance, intolerate yeah. intolerance then if it's like a forceful intolerance then of course you can't tolerate is that. it active or but is that's it like, passive that's, yeah. a re- that's a retaliatory tol- intolerance yeah. it's not like, yeah. a, like i'm intolerating first yeah that's yeah is it active or passive is it going uh is it is it to defend or is it to attack i think that's um that is a di- a, an important distinction but um yeah, what are, so, so we keep that in mind as we go forward because that does come into play here, I'm sure, because it's like, okay, are you, a, are you being intolerant in this limiting way or are you just exercising your right to free choice? And yeah, um, but just what I was going to say is, guys, we are definitely doing this again. Just sorry for you. you it's it's going to happen. It'll just be better organized. That's all I'm trying to say for everybody. Um but let's go. <laughs> Look, press play. Let's go. Uh, oh yeah, it's also thank you. Thanks yeah, for, yeah. for jump, hump, hopping. Please hump like, on, guys. Like Thanks back for humping on. Right. Yeah. There, there is more. I I that. Sure, oh, for sure. Exactly. You know what you're getting into. It's right, like, no right. holds barred. This is going to be offensive. Context, no pity. Yeah. Right. In that context, when when those things are decided to be put aside. If anybody goes into that situation, you know, like yes, especially, um, and, and that in and of itself, um, is is fine, right? Because everybody's in agreement there. But like. I think the overall thing here is that um sorry man, I kind of <laughs> lost my point here. Let me just reset here. I think the overall point right is that is that the main job of comedy is to be funny. You know, I mean, you can yeah. be funny in many ways, including ways that are incredibly philosophical and deep. Right, we've seen that with Hicks, we've seen that with Carlin, uh, and you can also be Gallagher and smash your fucking watermelon on sweet. On and that's all so, comedy. I did kind of want to talk to you about that because um, your comment from before, uh, da, 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 it's hilarious uh, to me. Oh, nice! Think that the was so comedy so passion for ideological discussion when fucking ventriloquists and watermelon smashing are valid expressions of comedy. Right. Yeah. And that was one of the comments nice. that you left on the thing. Yeah. Know, that seems so reductive to he like uh, take everything that Gallagher did. So I'm not the biggest fan of him, but like, sure. I don't know. Did you watch any of his specials or anything? Yeah, yeah, he was no, kind of I mean, generation before us. No, no. I, I used to like, watch his. I used to watch his stuff back in the day for sure. Yeah. I mean, he did have the sledgematic and like that giant couch and stuff. Like he had some weird stuff. There was definitely some prop action going on there, but. Uh, you know, like he had some deeper things. Like there was some really cool stuff that he did about like the meaning of words, and sure. I don't know, I, that bit like always got to me. And yeah, then well, I guess he not... got really political at the end. I don't know, just you know, to just like reduce that down to like this is the worst kind of comedy. I I'm mean, not, I'm not, try- I wasn't trying to like say that there's some sort of like scale of what is quality. What, what I'm trying to okay, say, right? what I'm trying to say is that the types of comedians that, that sort of take this attitude and take this stance, right, um, are the types of, of people who like who like think that they're Carlin, <laughs> you know, even though they're making pee pee poo poo jokes, right? Like like you know, they think that because they are a comedian and because they have an opinion that they are on that level of, of Carlin. And I think it's actually really reductive that, that we treat every comedian who, who has something to say that is mildly interesting about society or comedian or, or society or politics or anything like that. Like as if, you know, they're, they're trying to, what? um, like, like, like as if they're on that same level when, when there's so much more to what make those, what made those comics, um, yeah. So great, you know. Um, I think more often than whoa, not. Whoa, whoa, like, what what level is he speaking of here? Like, what what is the point? Be okay. as important as Carlin, right? So they want to intellectualize this shit. When okay. ultimately, fi- primarily, comedy is just meant to be funny. And if it's intelligent, yeah. and if it's insightful, that's even better. That's great. But a lot of these guys like want to like sit down and like you know be like, oh yeah, so I can't sell as many tickets as I could last year. That's fucking cancel culture because I'm an important okay comedian who belittling the art of comedy at all like it is art it is an important piece of art you know it is important art form but the, you know so is like music and i'm pretty sure that like pee pee poo poo pants like mc chris over here doesn't consider himself racist 
Radiohead. You know what I mean? Yeah, I just, uh, I know what you're saying. I understand what you're saying, but I don't know if I uh, quite agree. Um, like, what comedian is not selling as much and saying that that's cancel culture? All of them. Like, Jim Brewer. Let's start there, Jim Brewer. <laughs> Jim Brewer. Uh, I honestly don't remember much except for, like, Goat Boy. Um, right, yeah, but I've he was big him, in the like... 90s. He was big in the 90s, right? He was, he was yeah, I remember he had, like, an ACDC thing, like, I don't know, maybe, like, 10 years ago. No, the, you know, I'm not familiar with um, oh. comedians and stand-up in general, but he really dropped the ball here because he goes on for a long time without bringing any receipts about him saying cancel culture. Um, are you familiar with that happening? Like with this guy in particular? Uh, with Jim Brewer, I know he hasn't been canceled. Um, he might have brought it up previously, uh, the... but he was just on Rogan like a week ago okay. or something like that. Right, He's right. definitely selling out shows. So wait, yeah. wait, well, wait, wait. What is the guy? What? It, why does he even need? Even if he had receipts, I, I don't understand what he's trying to say here. Is he trying to say that it, like as Nico's put it, yeah, if you're not a top tier comedian, you can't make a spicy joke. So is he saying that only certain comedians can can even cry cancel culture? You you. Huh? I think it's even worse than that. I think he just thinks it doesn't exist because he's saying like uh, that, you know, Dave Chappelle was never canceled. Louis C.K. Oh, was never canceled. Oh, is he doing essentially the because it never actually happened or wasn't successful. It wasn't they were bad able enough. to come back. That, yeah. that happened in the, get... yeah, that happened in the Bob and Dane debate. And Sitch and Adam were like, yes. uh, just because people recover from it, it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean yeah. it's good. That's fine. I think that's true. I think that's a that's a good enough principle. I don't give a shit if it's successful or not. It's it shouldn't be a thing. Well, oh, yeah, just because not attempted. Ex- yeah, right. Just because Dina Carano gets like this. A- I was gonna say just, is the, does the flu not exist because people recover from it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's that's a great uh, analogy. I like it. Or, or like literally, like if you're like Gina Carano and you get booted off Disney and now you work for the Daily Wire, just because like you get a fat check, yeah. Like now you, everyone thinks that, oh, that's the like right wing actress, right? Like, you don't want to have to be that guy. Yeah. But now you have to be because it's your only career path. Yeah, yeah. you just and, do it. Yeah, it's true. Recovering is has nothing what, to do with it. Right, and one of the things that they really it shows that they are not engaging with the. The arguments is when they bring up like Bill Cosby or um, Harvey Weinstein, Weinstein. And, say, yeah. Yeah, and talk about them being canceled. It's like, no, that was legal action. Well, yes, yeah, exactly. There justice. was also that, that discussion. What is cancel- yeah. cancellation? What is cancellation? Then we go back into our discussion right. we had before. Yeah. Yeah. Cancel culture is explicitly social tyranny. Yes, that that's if, if that the government is involved. It is not cancel culture because a lot of the time when the government. With it, but... Yeah, but like a lot of the time when there's law involved and when when you can bring the bring the legal case and it's crime, there's not much of a moral like okay yes okay let the Carl Rittenhouse and things like that. That wasn't so much cancellation, but I, it's like okay when it comes to law and things uh, things like that, you ha- you have a, a greater chance of convincing everyone because it's a flipping law. Okay, it's about murder, it's about rape, that sort of thing. It's okay, but the, like. Cancel culture is more about okay, it's it's the the frivolous sort of you you said this, therefore your whole fucking life is taken from you. That that is right. yeah, and it's and it's gener- right. it's social. Yes, people actually go and then then bring a bring a use try and use litigation eventually if it's not working socially. But right. but most primarily it is social. It has very practical effects on people and that's the problem that we have with it yeah and i think that actually and i don't mean to keep harping on it but Mm -hmm. um um, tortious interference is a civil claim it's not criminal you know so i mean even yeah so i mean even the small smaller scale more direct more actionable um cases of these kinds of things are um are not criminal they are when they are able to be proven and fought and against. They are, um, they are civil cases. So mm-hmm. I think that, you know, bringing up talking about bringing also about, high. Uh, <laughs> Jeff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sorry to crash the party. Oh, yeah, you're a bit loud there. Let me bring you down. Oh, my bad. No, you you seem okay now. Welcome to the party. Oh, did I bet? Uh, oh. Oh, Ray. I almost and, banned uh, you. Steepath, 
Kopathy? Cpathy. Am I saying that right? Cpathy. Yeah. <laughs> Alrighty. That was, that, was, that was Calvin Pafford in the chat, but. No, oh, Andrew, Andrew was on a roll there, so it, like I almost banned your ass. I'm just kidding. It's just that it just came in. <laughs> oh, sorry. No, man. Do, do I just, uh, think... wasn't sure where to interject. No, do you fine. think that a lot of these like cancelings are like really under threat of physical force, though? Because I mean, Dave like, Chappelle remember... was attacked. Yeah. Well, right. Yeah, we were all. Or I mean, I'm sorry. No, we were all. Like a bunch of people got into politics like in 2016, right? Like that was like mm -hmm. it got huge. Yes. Yeah. And that was a time where people were going to colleges and like riots were happening outside because there was like a right wing speaker. Mm -hmm. And then that's kind of sure. when cancel's culture really picked up. So mm -hmm. do you, do you like in your mind is it like these bit like if like a business is like cancels a comedian like a comedy show like a comedian it's like there might actually be physical harm to my business. It's almost like co coercion at that it's point. It's part of it. I think it's it's part of what people take into consideration. Uh, it doesn't always have to be. It's not like a, it's not a necessary characteristic because you don't have to physically be under threat. Like the person who got fired, um, you were talking about it yesterday, um, Andrew, the, the person who got fired oh. from um, for talking about Hogwarts. Limited runs. Yeah. yeah. Limited run games. Exactly. Like it wasn't physical harm or whatever. It wasn't even, it was, it was them being scared of what, of the consequences. So they took it out on her basically. Um, yeah. So it doesn't have to be, it's just, it, it takes on so many forms. And I think in these debates, people take did, advantage of that. And they did reference um, it specifically when mm. they fired her, they did put out a community message saying that they wanted to make, this space um, feel comfortable and inclusive towards trans people, mm -hmm. but the only actionable thing, or you know, the only thing that she did, right, say a thing. was say that she liked was looking forward to Hogwarts Legacy. That in the in her actions as a you know games. community manager, yeah, yeah, in conjunction with uh, limited run games that is the only thing that did she, she do did. it in the capacity the as limited run games I, wasn't it just as an individual she said it oh i'm i i assumed it was as her you know that she had said that she's looking forward to this game i mean it's just looking forward to a game i mean yeah. i granted it i understand yeah. the controversy surrounding hogwarts and um mm. yeah uh jk rowling I get that, but that doesn't mean that everyone needs to, you know, view things through that lens. That doesn't mean that everyone or that no one can enjoy Hogwarts Legacy or Harry mm -hmm. Potter in general. Um, without... Can I ask you, how yeah. would you respond to what, um, so I know both Dane and, and Bob and actually Ed all use this too. So they're saying, okay, but is she entitled to that job? Oh, I've so said, yeah, I heard that it as yeah. Well, cool. well, well, there's, uh, uh, there's, there's kind of like, might two, be. yeah, there's kind of like two separate conversations running when people For say, sure. like, you have to kind of have a discussion on, like, is she entitled to it? No, but that's not really the point. It's, it's whether taken... or not she ought to be fired over yes, her position. Yes, exactly. Right? That, that is a cop out yeah. to me. It was something that Dane and Bob brought up with, um, I, I think it was in the situation, yeah. Adam one. Of like, oh, oh, um, is she entitled? No, nobody's entitled to any of that. And I think that they go for that because they're like, oh, I know that the the conservatives are all about staying away from entitlement and whatever. So it's like, oh, it's a gotcha for them. It's like, no, dude. Yeah, there were like yeah. similar kind of talking points during the whole Gina Carano firing that I remember. It's not that she's entitled oh, to it. It's 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 the reason for taking it away from her. Okay. And well, yeah. Okay. And what it's I would difficult. do is I would actually throw back Dane's words back at this question is that when he talked about what he wish would be done um, in relation to people um, like people on YouTube being um, what he thinks is over the line, he said that he would want them to be have varying levels of engagement before getting anywhere near like a ban, right? And so if, do the same kind of thing. If the company was like, said that, well, we don't want to upset our customers and they're upset that you 
like this game or whatever, then we need to find a way to handle that. Mm. Um, and and include her as part of like the team handling the this situation, yes. and not just throw her under the bus. Yeah. Uh, to get away from the controversy, I think that that would should be a actionable offense. Like she should be able to sue them. I'm not sure it is, but it should be. Yeah, like, she's not entitled to their unending support, you know? Like, if I, I, I mean, I'm part of a business, and it's actually, um, I can see people, oh, it's reconnecting. Hey, are you, can you guys, yeah. you guys can hear me. Oh, anyway. it was just me. It's, it's reconnecting, yeah. Yeah, but you guys can still hear me. Um, you can still yeah. hear. Yeah, the point is, like. Yeah, I can still hear you. They can still be a, um, a, people could now go after the business because of what I've said. And um, I understand that, that there is that risk. I mean, like cancel culture. Hardcore with most of the clubs. Uh, it's only coming through one ear. <laughs> he was just on Joe. I screwed up on the sound. Sorry about that. Oh, oh you're <laughs> fine. Selected as uh, stereo instead of mono. Oh. Yeah, hold on. Just... I'll just pretend I know what that means. I lost, I lost my... I, I put it in the lab channel. I, I'm not good. <laughs> I got to head you know, out. I'm not very tech savvy so, either. I'm gonna be going soon. Well, I'm. We're all gonna. We're all going to. I'm closing down the the Discord after this. I'm kidding, but yeah. Oh, uh, okay. No, no, no. Does anyone remember that? Yeah. Remember the uh, what is it? Jessica Price, um, controversy. No. Yeah. Oh, she was fired Sounds from. Familiar. Yeah. No, in 2018, she was fired. Uh, from. The Guild Wars 2 um, like, to, um, team because she got into a fight on Twitter mm. over. Look, um, it's like she was went off on some guy who was trying to engage with her mm -hmm. arguments directly. And then and she, she made it, it all about like gender and saying, you know, women have. Um, you know, like, how dare you come in telling me how to do my job, blah, blah, blah. Oh, and so she, she, she kind of... Wait, she got fired over that? No, she made a huge... Right, like, right, it was right, like, sure. it happened over the weekend. I haven't ever heard. So, like, they came back on Monday and were like, oh, you know, like, the, the management was like, oh, wait, what what is this dumpster fire? And the thing is, is that um, I think that that... Um, I haven't gone over it in a long time. Or basically since it happened. But I think that going over that would be a good um a good example of like like where 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 does this lie? Is this um reasonable or unreasonable? Because I'm uh, I remember it being quite a big deal at the time. Hmm. Yeah, no, it's sure. Like, yeah, because it was a PR disaster, and she, I believe she didn't apologize, and I think there was a whole bunch of aspects to it. Like, are people entitled to the support of the company in this case? No. But the complete throwing people under the bus kind of thing because of the fear of the mob, I'm not in support of that. So, like, if this yeah. if this doesn't help the company, I understand. I definitely, I get mm -hmm. it. But Yeah, there's, like, a point. Yeah, like, the, you're not entitled to that, but you're also, you're also entitled to some sort of respect as an individual. Um, it's silly. One of the weirdest, most silly things I've ever heard is, like, of advertisers being criticized for appearing on, like, YouTube videos, which is, like, I know yeah. how this stuff works. You literally target according to somebody's interests. Okay? It has nothing to do with the company. It's everything to do with the individual using that browser. So... Yeah, I, it's all, like, kind of... Yeah. So how could you... Like, a rhythm mickly assembled yeah so how, how did yeah that... like when that's when that senator was like why am i getting all this furry porn ads on my <laughs> and, and 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 they were like they were like mr senator that's that's targeted advertising no, yeah, that, that's exactly it it's not you supporting <laughs> those those actual things it's not you so but the thing is they are so scared of the pr disaster 
honestly, everybody is so scared all the time. And, and that is, that doesn't make it okay. Um, that, that, that's the, the frivolous nature of cancel culture is what I think everyone has a problem with. Um, and well, this, this thing of just having to drop her and push her under the bus, instead of saying, we know, we respect that Gina Carano is an individual and, um, our, and her ability as an actress is not, is not, um, affected by her p political opinions. Please watch our show. It's set in space, you know? Let's maybe just relax a bit here. But she, you know, she denied, like, the Holocaust by it, not even though she acknowledged yeah. the heinous Did... acts of the Holocaust. That constitutes Oh, they decided Holocaust that she did... denial. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, No, like, that's yeah. that's a defense that that's a lot of people a... run Jeez, for Disney's decision all, of firing it her. It all compounds. They're like, oh, well, you know what, it doesn't matter because her opinion was so drastic, you know, you can't accept it. I, I get that. But... Geez, mm -hmm. when you have that lack of principle and you're applying it to things, you're not even lack of principle. Just when you're when you have that extremism, uh, geez, then then well, we're just all screwed. To a certain extent, I I feel literally like, I just Hitler. Think that, yeah, sorry. Yeah, no. That, to a certain extent, I do get it. Um, you know, in the same way that oh, I forget who it was, but they said, you know, um, you know. Republicans buy shoes, right? So we want to, you know, yeah, yeah. Hitler, Hitler bought shoes. You know? How are you different? <laughs> they better not exactly. drink water. Yeah. And so, uh, so I, you want to keep um, your talent um, neutral to a certain extent, you know, and how much people are on, um, you know, celebrities that are on Twitter just announcing everything that they think and feel and whatnot. It's probably not conducive to to good public relations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I so, think. Yeah. Sorry. Oh no, this is a complete thought. Basically, I was going to say a little. Okay. Bit. Um, yeah, I think Sitch put it best when he said that you know, like back in the day, people had like this kind of way to sort of deify celebrities as if they're like these larger than life figures. Mm -hmm. But that's only because they were kind of so far removed from the public. They were untouchable. You know, like you could you didn't yeah, you couldn't like kind of get all of their weirdest they were unknowable. opinions. Right. Yeah. And then and then once we get yeah, and then once we get Twitter, it's like, oh, never mind. Now we know everything. Uh, you're all lunatic <laughs> you're all lunatics. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 But it's still not good public relations to have um like you're the star of your show, fighting with random people on Twitter, um, regardless. Yes, of Yes, exactly. It is. Like make the decision yeah. not mm -hmm. to do that. Yeah, you have. Yeah, but so. there's I mean, like you... some sort of social norm, whereas like as an employee of a thing, you're you're allowed to do something that is like normal until told otherwise. That's yeah, like yeah. No, if you worked at a coffee sure, shop right. and you made yourself a cup of coffee and like in, on the first day, and they're like, actually here, you have to pay for that. Yeah. And like going forward, you'd be like, okay, I'll pay for that. But like assuming that you get free coffee working at a coffee shop isn't that crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's so funny. Yeah. Is, yeah. Whereas if, uh, you, if you fired that person on the first day for like stealing coffee or whatever. Uh, that, and tried that's to a good them, analogy. Right. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. yeah. As opposed to, yeah, you're like, geez, just relax. There, there's... You're like, just from now on, we're strict here. Yeah. yeah. I like You're that. entitled so, to some yeah. sort of warning, is, is, I, I think is fair enough. Mm. Yeah. And I think mm -hmm. that, you know, bringing it back to, to the stream, I think that, you know, we have people like Ed here who zoom out and look at the uh, look at the facts very vaguely and very conveniently. And then they don't want to hear the, the nuance to, to be corrected in the situation. They they want to like, no, my interpretation is good enough. You know, I don't want to you know, you're you're trying to you're trying to muddy the waters. You're trying to make things confusing by adding in all this extra information. No, no, no. I, I understand what's going on. And they insist on that. And mm -hmm. I think that that's it it kind of gives of room to weasel in and out of positions. Yeah. And they don't care about being accurate. They care about their feelings and their perspective. Are you getting a phone call? Who's getting a phone call? How dare you get a phone call during stream, which was completely planned? Okay, let, let, let's get through, let's get to 20 minutes. I do need to go to bed because I got a presentation in the morning. Let's go. Neat.
Christmas May, Andrew. Heard him say that uh, you know, he's not oh, selling no, because of cancel culture. Well, I mean, does he have to say it? He's like, look at the venues he's playing compared to the venues he used to play. You know, like they're significantly well, smaller. I think like you know, the top I mean, venue that anyone can play right now is kind of the mothership. Like, yeah, that's, you understand that's that they're like seven hundred dollar tickets. Like even if it no, is no, like I, kind I, of a small yeah. club. Like... Hello. Like, yes, he's. That's great. I am not knocking Jim Brewer's success, but that comedy was recorded a year or two ago. <laughs> All right, and let's be honest here. He also just got signed on to uh, Crowder's. Uh, to I think he's with Crowder now and shit like that. So he's already in that sort of broken pipeline. Yeah. I think he's, um, but yeah, he is sort of part of that thing. So it makes sense. And, you know, as a Joe Rogan fan, I'm sure that you've heard the whole, you know, Rogan bump. I do not understand the point he's making here. Is it, is he talking about like how his complaints are invalid because that as soon as you go on Rogan, he get... is part of a, a group of people I that think so. support him? I don't understand. Yes. It doesn't make mm -hmm. sense. And, and well, because, this is incredible. Because... That's the way the brain works. Because well, Rogan the leads to Ben Shapiro, and Ben Shapiro leads to Matt Walsh, and Matt <laughs> Walsh is literally Hitler. So you can see the, the, the train here, right? Uh, Everyone is as crazy as their craziest friend. Uh, or a friend of a friend. So you, you can't have anyone that's less, you know, left-wing as you are. But you can see how the mask off this is, right? Like, he's literally yeah. thinking, he, it just comes out as if it's natural, the way he just says it. Oh, yeah, he's like this oh, and this Joe and this. As if as if it's, as if it's, it's it's a solid fact. As if it, none of the claims, you, the the discussion we've just had, as if that was invalid. That's not even a. It's not even possible. This is how we think. Oh well, well he's a so like guilt by association. Yes, there there is some. Yes, okay. If you are associated, there is maybe something you need to. Uh, you could say, okay, cool. Um, there was this association. What? How was that interaction? When uh, Gavin was on uh, FNT, what was that like? Okay, you can see how, how the interaction is, what, what, what the, the agreement was there, whatever. It doesn't mean that you now need to, everybody who interacts with everybody um, has the same views as everybody that they're interacting with. Of course not. Guilty yeah, but, association, but that's that like what, that's sort of what he's, he's, he's accusing he, is like five layers of guilt by association, yeah, right? it's incredible. Because, he heard Joe Rogan and he's like, Joe Rogan, that guy has people, he talks to people who talk to people who talk to people who are like, pretty bad. But how fucking simple is that? That is in a simplistic, how, st wow. And, and he refers to it as if it's absolutely natural. It's not even a thing. It's not a point of contention. It's nothing you can attack. It's incredible. That's what I mean by mask off. It's like, so that's a point. That's Actually, a point by, by that logic, make. Eduardo is, is as, he has all my political opinions at this point. Yeah. Yeah, you will be here, here we are. Yeah. He's talking to Gray and Gray's talking to me, so he's he's whatever I am. Yeah, mm -hmm. he's, he's like, a captain. You could make this argument actually. for seemingly anyone yeah. by virtue of six degrees of separation. Yes, yeah, so I was gonna say that I was gonna say, yeah. <laughs> all right, let's go. Let's see what else how how, how he takes this further. Explain That's it to us, Edward. Well, I mean you were there. I don't know. <laughs> It's you huge. It blows you up huge, right? Um, yeah. I mean, like, it definitely has a bump. He is like the highest podcast out there. Definitely the highest one on Spotify. I am right. pretty sure he's still the most listened to. But yeah, mm -hmm. um, it definitely gives a bump. Like every comedian that's been on there. That so I don't listen to every episode or anything like that. But right. if I see a guest that I want to listen to, I do uh, listen to it. But every comedian that I've heard be on there, they talk about that huge bump. I know. Um, I like hearing Dave Smith. Every time he's on there, he says there's a huge, you know, Rogan bump. So, sure. Yeah. I don't know, man. I, I'm not hearing any of those guys particularly claim that. Um, it's interesting, right? Um, I'm, are those newer comics? Uh, no. Like, oh, uh, okay. No, I don't he, think Rogan really has new guys on that often. Okay. I mean, that makes sense, man. But like, for me, I find that sort of cancel culture, complaining bullshit, that's coming exclusively from dudes in the 90s, like maybe dudes in the early 2000s who were, who were a big deal and, who, and all that shit. And okay. these are guys who are. Oh, you know, something that just occurred to me that didn't occur even the first time I watched it, but is he listening to people complaining about the audience shift and then, and then ascribing to them that they're complaining about cancel culture? Do you think that that's what's happening? He, because he's I don't know. cancel culture in a way that I, I think it's his excuse. He thinks that that they they are that it, he's trying to say that it's just audience audiences deciding not to watch him because it's not popular. It's like oh well, well yeah, yeah. The, these these woke but, films are failing because uh, 
you know, like they, they try and make some 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 alternative reality that that holds their uh, their ideology up. So he's just like, it's not bad, cancel. It's basically, it's just they're not funny because they're not woke enough, you know? Woke, woke comics are funny. Is that is that what he's trying to say here? Well, no, see, uh, what I'm hearing him say um, is that these comics are, com well, he, what the what he's saying is that they're, they're old. That comics are complaining about cancel culture. But what he's defined as cancel culture is... Um, the audience walking away, the audience not caring about your comedy anymore, mm -hmm. which is wrong, which is not, you know, not what anyone else um, agrees is cancel culture, right? So, so his example. I'm wondering if, I'm wondering if he's listening to comics complain about the audience, and then he says, oh, they're complaining about cancel culture, rather than the comics literally talking about cancel culture. And then mm -hmm. him saying that's not a uh, a good argument, you know. You see um, the difference. Yeah, the the, the comics talking about cancel <laughs> culture, they're they're not complaining about it being the reason that they're not doing well. They're just talking right. about well, it. Well, no, that's my my question is that um, because he's so vague and so imprecise. Um, I, I don't even trust him, um, his account of things, <laughs> yeah. uh, for these comics. Maybe all of these comics are simply talking about audience shift. Maybe they're just talking about how it's it's a shame that there nobody finds their jokes funny anymore, right? I don't even find. Maybe they're yeah. not even saying anything about cancel culture, but because of how he has defined cancel culture, he's saying that's what they're talking about. I can see that happening. Uh, but what I can't see is people, the audience, the audience following cancel culture. I can't see that happening. I can see the 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 loud major the loud loud minority trying to get it to happen, and that being something worth complaining about. But then it's not succeeding in the end, most of the time for the bigger guys. Yes, um, that's right. what I can see. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's kind of like with uh, Jordan Pierce Peterson in his earlier days, where he was selling out places, but yeah. they were people that were protesting him, mm -hmm. trying to get his um, his appearances shut down. Um, but but with the comedy thing, it's because Ed is so imprecise with his perspective and his language. Um, yeah, we're trying to figure it's out hard what he to means. know what he means. Yeah. Because and I, just, I don't think it's like Gray hasn't fa asked him enough questions or anything like that. I don't think it's that. It's just that he maybe it's also part of that thing that you were talking about where he knows what he's talking about, but he doesn't make enough of an effort to make sure we know. So he knows exactly, what he's talking yeah. about when it comes because he's been in this echo chamber for forever. Um, but he can't, he can't think that anyone has any different opinions than him, so he, just, he just assumes it's obvious that everyone. It's very obvious. I don't need to explain myself. Yeah. I see this with Bob all the time is that he will judge what other people have said as if like how if I was to make this argument what would I mean right yes like when, when, <laughs> yeah like he when Rags was saying complaining about um Black Widow then then uh or, or Ryan, Bob said yeah. you know oh hey but Thor the Dark World you know why aren't you complaining about Thor the Thor the Dark World? Mm -hmm. And then Rag is like, but I haven't brought that up. I, I don't know about that. You know, maybe it's a problem. Maybe it's not. I'd have to look at it, you know, but I'm not talking about that. And it's, you know, these, um, it seems to be the same group of friends. It's really interesting that they've all kind of collected together, that they insist that they know what they're talking about they insist they know what their opponents now, are talking about and they can judge people by all of these metrics even though they seem to be wrong very frequently but i mean also just just now saying all of that right we have that co to contend with say if we have such we're in a position as gray is in now so he's got to ask those questions in the, he's got yeah. to try to 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 work through that mind virus 
that Ed has here. So how does that happen? That That's what we, we need to see uh, in this because how, how do you navigate a conversation like that when I feel like with say gray um you know sitch and adam all of that they try i don't know how you're gonna see this coming but yeah the but... The, the attitudes of, of society and the audience has changed who started back up i don't know who did that uh, it might have been I switched me tabs i think it was me how uh, rude well either way no, I, I was my, my thought was finished and we do need to we do need to wrap up anyway so let's get to the yeah, last yeah. let's do the last five minutes here last five minutes Alrighty. of the first one yeah let's go and they have a hard time dealing with that they have a hard time understanding hey you know, making fun of the mentally disabled is not cool no more, you know? And I think, you know, these are people who are rich. Who and is this fictional well, comedian that you're talking about, though? Like, this, dude, this 90s guy who's still calling Ron. people retards. I'm talking I don't... Ron, bro. I'm talking, like, all of them. I'm talking pretty much every single 90s comedian. Because notice, the sort of 90s comedian... So David Tell is doing that? Awesome. Right? I, haven't heard, I haven't heard David Tell the thing. Well, David Tell is a totally different thing, right? Because he's yeah. always been part of that sort of offensive style. He's a 90s comedy. comedian. Yes, and he's, always, and he's always played specifically to that audience and shit, right? It's sort of like a cult following with him. There aren't a whole so, lot of new David Tell fans, let's be real here, you know? The way that I've heard, like, cancel culture talked about would be, sure. like, you know, Kathy Griffin. Like she held up that Trump head, she got canceled. She couldn't get huh? booked. Every like part of that tour was canceled. I think she said it was like two years before she could actually, you know, get a job again. So in other words, I, yeah. I don't know that that's her saying like the crowd is just wrong. Like she noticed that she did. She noted that she did something offensive. Yeah, she's and, not entitled. Yeah, the other ones are. Well, so that's a comedian that I know that like suffered some sort of loss from being canceled due to her actions. I, I don't know who these other comedians are you're talking about, all of them. Like, dude, like, I, mean, I don't know. All of them. Like, it's been a while. I mean, I'll be real with you, dude. It's been a while since I've been like heavy, heavy, heavy into the stand up comedy scene. That's these days, I'm more into the sort of, you know, Vic Berger, Tim and Eric, Eric Andre style of comedy. Um, and that sorry, makes no but, sense. I don't yeah, care. yeah, yeah. He, I don't care. he brought up one example, right? Yeah. And then he expanded out to everyone. And then, like, he's actually, saying it, that he doesn't remember a lot of it. it but it's exactly yeah. what Andrew was saying is that it's so obvious to him. So he sees, says this one thing and then he's like, it's all of them, man. It's all of them. As if like, as if, he, of course, it's all of them. You're supposed to say, of course it is. He's, of course he's right. You, that's an exact example. We just spoke about it and then he just went and did what we were talking about. It's beautiful. It's like we wrote it. All right, make this shit up. Mm -hmm. I don't think you can write what's going to come next. <laughs> oh, right, right. Let's go. I'm excited. Just play. Go. Do it. But a part of that for me is because I've heard so many of the people that I thought were hilarious, you know, growing up at Dave Chappelle. There you go. Dave Chappelle's a great one. He's not canceled or anything, but there's another fucking out of touch dude who just doesn't understand that, like, his style of humor is just not going to play these days, you know? So um, I well, couldn't disagree with you more. Well, uh, let, me, I, let, me just, let me just go uh, ahead. Let me just put it like this, man. A lot of the reasons why I stopped giving a fuck about stand up comedy was because I was sick and tired of hearing all these dudes who I used to respect bitching and crying about, like, cancel culture, dude. When they say shit that. I'm sorry, dude. It's just off to the fly. Look, like, if if a comedian from the '60s or from the '40s, right, like whatever, who who was back then, it was cool to call black people the N word with a hard R, came to the '90s scene and did the exact same shtick. Like, I think we would all be like, "Yeah, bro, what do you fucking expect?" But I think because a lot of us sort of have an emotional attachment to those comedians, uh, we sort of look past that common sense because we have that emotional attachment, and so therefore we think they should be respected so that other people can understand how they're they're great. When at the end of the day, the society has just moved past them. They're just I not just couldn't a... disagree with you more. Um, so yeah, specifically right, but... talking about Chappelle, like in order, in in honor of this debate or in preparation of it, um, I went and watched his two last specials. I hadn't seen um, The Closer in like a year, since whenever it premiered. Um, man, it is better than I remember. Uh, oh. Chappelle is just amazing. He is the GOAT. Uh, I don't know anyone that's saying that he's beyond or he's over his prime. Like, he is mm -hmm. amazing. And I forgot how many like great jokes were actually in that last special. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, fine, but like amazing, a lot yeah. of people that I've heard have definitely said that, like, uh, I mean, you can go on Double Toasted. It's something that they touch upon all the time, I mean, you know? But, I mean, it's great that you find that he's awesome, but, like, for me, you know, I love the Chappelle show growing up and shit, right? But even before all this cancel shit happened, I'll be real with you, man. Like, I, I thought, like, I thought his, his stand wasn't you. that great. And that's not, like, because of any no. particular issue. Like, well, that's the thing, though. Comedy is subjective. It would be like right, saying, right, right, this yeah. color is the best color. Like, it's very subjective. It's right. very personal. Right. But uh, there is saying. no one comedy that's great for everybody. Exactly. Like, it right. really is a matter of taste. And I'm arguing against that. Well, I mean, you are saying that he's past his prime, that he is just some rich guy that's out of touch. Yeah, and that's I gotta say, I'm not speaking for anybody but myself here, man. Okay, you know? well, I'm just speaking are for you, my... Are you? Are you? Are you only special. speaking yeah, for yourself? You see me I don't to... have it. Yeah, I don't think that's... so. That's so and funny I... because I think Dave, Ch like, old, Dave Chappelle's old comedy was like very standard, haha, -ha, white people, black people sort of stuff. And it, it's his most his most recent specials have been so much more nuanced than that. Right? Yeah, it's actually better. Yeah, like his style of comedy has evolved so much, and he's gotten mm. bigger over time. 
So I, yeah, and I, I wish I had looked it up, but um, his uh, the audience score on Sticks and Stones was ninety seven percent, or sorry, uh, I think it was ninety eight percent, and then on the closer was ninety five. So it's not like he's out of touch with the audience. Well, was the closer the one where he he did the trans thing the whole time? Uh, he does twelve minutes of it. It is the part where he uh, dedicates it to Daphne and talks about her story. But um, I actually timed it for this debate. It's about like twelve to fourteen minutes of the one hundred and ten minute special. I didn't like it at the closer as much because of that, but Sticks and Stones was it was like a little blip in Sticks and Stones, right? And people got really mad about that. Yeah, and they tried um, to I would it. suggest going back to the closer. Like I remembered thinking like half of it was all about that. It really isn't. It's it seriously like, like a like lot more. Minutes. I remember watching the closer, and I I thought it was more than twelve minutes. I thought it was all, like the whole theme of the show. Um, and that's why I never worked, watched. Yeah. It. And that's why it's, it's worth it. To be, it is worth it. Yeah. Important yeah, check it to out. Be, uh, objective and uh-huh. to relate to what actually happened and not your impressions. Yeah, that's as because that's you as can objective. Remember things incorrectly. That's as objective as you can be. Is be like this is how much of the content was it. You can't really say much else. But like, uh, like without starting to get subjective. But like for me, I enjoyed the whole thing, no matter how much of it was about that stuff and how much it wasn't. I, I enjoyed the. The way he actually used it as like an honoring thing. It was really well done. I thought it was a lot more about it. So if it's just like 12 minutes, I'm like, Jesus, we're just, it's, you know why? It was also because I was watching through the lens of everybody's upset about this. So uh, yeah, that's probably yeah. what happened for me too. I was like kind of cringing the whole time. Like people were right. This is a lot, but if you're, if it, it's really only 12 minutes. Like, that's so surprising. Mm. It could be closer to 14, but it's really not half the special. I remember it being, like, half the special. And it was just, I think just for me, it was just, like, it is, in no way is this hateful. This is incredible. It, this does is he, so like, ironic. stop and start with it? Does he, like, kind of bring it back to that a couple times? Um, so he starts with, like, a Corona thing and then, like, the Space Jews. Um, sorry, I'm just looking through kind of his set list. He has a trans story, like, a little about halfway through it, but it doesn't have to do with Daphne. It's just this fan, and they have a trans daughter. Oh, yeah. That um, and then he talks about punching up and punching down, and then eventually he goes into the J.K. Rowling thing, which leads into that. So did, um, did you did you uh, start the watch on the, the trans fan story and then stop it and then restart it when he got to the Daphne story? Yeah. So, yeah, I did kind of stop it when he uh, stopped doing the trans stuff and then went back to kind of oh, more normal bits. Way. Like, he goes back to Space Jews, and uh, there's a couple more callbacks in there. And then, okay, uh, well, yeah, I started it back up. It's probably but, yeah, that, it would like, be, like, the last 20 or so minutes of the thing. Are all our mental clock, clock started, like, when mm-hmm. he first talked about the trans thing. And yeah, then even yeah. though he doesn't talk about it, we're still in that mode, like... Mm-hmm. For sure. Mm-hmm. And no, that's what I didn't realize what it, he did yeah. so many times in this. He d- has so many callbacks in this special. Like, it really is kind of a masterpiece the way that he crafted it. Nice. Callbacks are... Sounds legit. I'll check it out. Yeah. Uh, guys, Gray, do you have a point at which we could, we could like... <laughs> A crescendo. No, and end um, this. it evolves into like pure lunacy uh, really soon. Because like so, I don't want to uh, just it, end this is off, but I'm I really do need. Ed kind of does. Um, okay. uh, look, okay, so there's no good way to end this, guys, other than ending. No, I mean I do have a short that like sums up the entire debate. It's okay, uh, let's after do that. this point. Okay. Yeah, yeah, on my channel, I think it's the uh, pedantic uh, can, world record. Can you, can you That's change? Literally, you what this debate this? devolves into. Can you change this? Uh, Here, let me pull it up. I'll pull it up. Yeah, pull it up. Okay. Um, I did a bad it? response to Duma's video. It's called a pedantic world record, I think. Oh, okay. Um, it's kind of yeah. a super cut of the debate, yeah, it's right if you here. will. Here. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Guys, I've just put the made the Discord thing become available so that we can pedantic, share pedantic, all our pedantic, links. Pedantic. pedantic, pedantic. Pedantic, 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 pedantic. 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 Was pedantic on your word of day calendar or something? Pedantic, pedantic, pedantic. Because it's a pedantic. Pedantic, pedantic, pedantic. People, great. You are pedantic. Patrick also says something pedantic. Pedantic, 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 Calling everything pedantic after the Dave's. But I love that is safe word. It sounds like it's. I like, think so. I don't oh think God, I know what it means brilliant. anymore. I thought I knew what the word meant, 
when I read it in the title, but now I'm confused. Yeah. How is everything yeah. semantic? How could you use well, it that much? Well, no. The thing is that what he's... I, I thought about this, actually, quite a bit last night. Is that well, when I first watched your debate, it took me like five plus hours to get through it because I kept stopping to rant at, at Ed. But, it was um, tough. Yeah. Um, is that he... What he did um, is he's tracking that you're not you're not believing and cooperating with his points right so when you yeah. start when you start um and uh it sort of parallels um being pedantic right if when somebody is making an argument and they're avoiding the substance of the argument to point out the um technical errors in your argument then they're being pedantic but that's not what you were doing at all, right? You didn't believe in the substance of the argument, and you were using uh, so counterargument like against text. the substance of his <clears throat> argument. But he, but Ed, does not does not seem to be able to track any of that. He doesn't see that you are. I mean, uh, what was it? At one point, he says that you're all over the place, and you're making like three um, three conversations at once. That's yeah. what really clued me into thinking that he just is not able to track your conversation. That, you know, you have one conclusion, you have one one argument with multiple premises. Mm-hmm. So that's what I was tracking. And, yeah. And yes. You need, yeah, Ed, it's okay though, to have multiple seeing premises. Seeing all of this as different conversations, <sighs> dip, jumping around, you know, skirting around what he's trying to talk about, Right. And that's what he, so his perspective is entirely flawed. He just is not able to understand what you're saying, track the arguments that you're making, or the argument that you're making. Ooh, we're yeah. going to have to map this, boys. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be part of it, Gray, but we're going to have to do it so we can do this. Um, like, uh, yeah, let's, um, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to get uh, basically either stream yards or something like that. Now that we've gotten donations today. Thank you everybody for, for helping me out here. Cause we can do You're that. Welcome. And we can all do it together because um, <laughs> my computer, no, seriously, you were like, thank you guys. Um, we can, mm-hmm. we You're can very do... welcome. Even though I didn't donate, but you know, <laughs> you donated. Yeah, I was the co- top earner. <laughs> I, I and then and then J Mac outbid me and then I tried to bid again to make myself but I forgot to put in my name, so my donations uh, are split in no. two. Right. Uh huh. I, I didn't even get credit for it. <laughs> Guys, but it it doesn't matter the fact that you're even here. Okay. Point is between weird. this stream and last night's such an atom. I'm broke. Yeah. <laughs> I have no more money. <laughs> How I, I I look. I'm glad I was part of that experience for you. Uh, I hope I haven't traumatized you. <laughs> No, but um, what this, the, what we will do, because it seems like my computer is just, it, it struggles a little bit um, with the, with the stream yards and shit like that, it will, it brings in your guys' videos a lot easier and things like that. So I would expect it would, my computer would be okay with it. Um, and also I wouldn't have had, I won't have to use the VPN. So um, I think we can, we can do a, a regular ensemble sort of stream if you guys want whoever wants to join and uh especially with a like with a debate like this where we want gray's like i don't want to just be mapping uh what gray says like having gray around will also help me put that into the map right so doing Mm -hmm. one of these things at least once a week would also be really great so we maybe we make thursday one of them every second thursday we put everybody together let's figure it out We'll do. We'll discuss it on Discord. Um, cool. Yeah, we'll do it properly um, because this has been really great, just to to have everybody's discussions right in real time instead of just just me um, respond. Because mm-hmm. you know, uh, we, we we can only take so much kitty exactly for so long. Yeah, this is why you know. If anyone know it's it's been really great. I'm sorry that we couldn't continue. Uh, we we did start very late. But if we dedicate a whole stream to this, it, I think it'll be a lot of fun. 
Um, and I think we definitely, if anything, have to just do it with, with this debate. Um, I'm, not de I'm not going to map it without you guys. So let's do that. Um, yeah, we can talk about awesome. now. Yeah, exactly. Um, it, it will help that you see my computer will be able to stream my actual diagramming while talking to you guys as well. Uh, well, well, you know, because running Discord and the VPN and all of this sort of thing, I don't think it'll work very well. Um, mm -hmm. So having the having that separation will help, I think. I'm a fan of train wreck. <laughs> oh, that's what you're here for. Now you Thanks. have to update oh, yeah. the, uh, the 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 name and the, yeah. the title and mm -hmm. all of that. Everything is, I will. Yeah. Be in there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just had to stop it somewhere because the thing is, listen, okay, we'll 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 get to the point where I can go for twelve hours. I will. I would. Seriously, it's just some of us have day jobs, okay? I think we all have day jobs at this point, but yeah. You have to wait for a yeah. holiday. Yeah, yeah. So um, I would go, I would continue. Maybe bring but, Gordon yeah. on. Yeah. Or can he not do that? Uh, he does. Uh, he, sometimes he's interested. Other times, I, I think it, it's it's in his interests to remain faceless. Um, yeah. But, no, I mean, he could yeah. just be an understandable. Icon. He doesn't need to be. Yeah, exactly. He need to be on your camera. It would be really great. Yeah, it would be. Um, I one just, day. I, I worry think about uh, if such a long stream, him being away from you. Oh, you yeah, always, yeah. You yeah. always could put a paper bag over his head. How, how could he? Yeah, exactly. That that would really work. I, I don't know how he de he could deal with with being away from me for so long. No, he's really good. He, uh, we, um, we make up for it. Don't worry. But, uh, and he also knows I'm just very strange. So he likes me to just go and be mm. strange over there with you guys. And just like, oh, you're done being a nerd? Okay, cool. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I think he likes walking past and seeing what we're up to, you know? Uh, it's also very, mm. it's very cute. Anyway, guys, um, thank you all for being here. Uh, thank you for dealing with whatever the hell the stream turned out to be. This was, I, I love this, actually. So um but i do need to go to bed uh i don't want to look at my phone right now because there's probably work messages and whatever but um we'll, well get thanks there for letting us be a part of this this was no, fun yeah. thank, thank you yeah, guys for, for being part of it you guys made it amazing yeah, yeah uh, it's not the last time i, I would have come on earlier just i was at work you know what but I, I know i made all of your you. days by coming on so you did you did I did. Yes. You did. Actually, you ruined the stream. It's got to be taken down now. Ruined. Yes. No, that's blasphemy. Actually, I, I was about to say. I, yeah. I uplifted the 